Welcome to Beyond Beauty, the Professional Beauty Association's podcast where we take a deeper look into the minds and the hearts of the amazing professionals who make up this professional beauty industry. I am your host, Leslie Perry, and with me today, I'm so excited, first time I've met you, and I cannot wait to have this conversation with you, Mr. Giovanni Picconi, Hello. CEO of Alpha Parf. If you've heard of the brand, I'm sure you have, and I can't wait to hear more. Let's start by just your background. We were just chatting, and you said that you this has been like a labor of love, a passion project of yours. How did you get into professional beauty? Great, uh, great question. I, I I always leaned towards fashion, right, from a okay. very young age. I liked the fashion industry. Um, it's very closely related to the beauty industry, and my background with my family you really have one of two avenues to take it's either construction and i make a joke i have soft hands you have soft hands you did construction wasn't wasn't going to be it for me after trying it for one summer or i i come from a long line of hairdressers as well um that holds true for both sides of my family my mom's side and my dad's side so it was easy for me to enter in my teens um um the professional hair sector as a hairdresser um, because i've got a lot of family and i decided to get involved uh, i'm very close to my family being very italian and i followed the path that was already kind of laid out for me um and that's what really brought me in in the early years so you you were a hairdresser how did you start to cross that line into a brand and manufacturing products for the hairdresser Great question. So I was working at a salon and the salon at the time decided to bring uh, to bring in house Sebastian International, a very cool. Yeah, very, very cool styling line. So after being behind the chair at that period, professionally for about five years, but being in the sector for seven, including beauty school, I um, the education team naturally came to our salon, taught us about the brand. And they saw that it just resonated well with me. The story resonated well. Robert Labetta was really inspirational. It was a very funky brand at the time. It just, it just, it just really spoke well. Uh, so I remember it. A fun fact about Sebastian: My mom was a hairdresser for 35 years, and she owned a salon. And she brought Sebastian into her salon. Very, you know, years, years, years y- ago. Y- yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that's exactly how I. Uh, that's exactly how I broke into it. The, the the education team that was in and out of the salon after after just a few visits saw that for me uh, it just it just it just spoke well to who I was at that time. They asked me to participate as an educator, so I started doing some educational work and per, per DM that led to more and more and more important events. Uh, at the time, they were doing the what was called the Robert Lavetta tours. Um, And at the time, he was the creative director of Sebastian International. And it led me to do some stage work directly working next to Robert Labetta. Um, That allowed that was a bridge for me to leave the work from behind the chair and break into kind of the corporate world. Um, Eventually, eventually, Sebastian uh, had a merger or was acquired by by, uh, Procter & Gamble and Wella. And being a Wella salon, it transitioned over into more commercial affairs, okay. aka uh, salesman type activities. So it was uh, it was really early in my career. I'm, I um, that 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 was the direct catalyst of what brought me from behind the chair into into the professional sector. So then, how how Alpha Parf? Where did great? Yeah, great. Yeah, great question. Yeah, I, I want to dig in. I'm gonna... yeah, yeah, great. <laughs> great question. Question. Personal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, to, you know, fast forward a bit. Naturally, I'm Italian, uh, of Italian origin. I'm bilingual. Uh, after living in Italy, I quickly started to understand, after having a few years in the professional hair care sector, that the northern, that the northern it, uh, Italian region, more importantly, the, the the Lombardy region, was the center, was the capital of the world, if you will, for dye related goods and having. The most important trade show of the world in northern Italy. I remember saying to my mom, "Mom, I think I should, you know, I think I should just start to attend the show." After one or two years uh, of, of 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 show attendance at Cosmoprof Bologna, I was always naturally a networker, and there was many brands doing business throughout Europe that showed interest in doing business in the U.S. Um, 
eventually it caught the attention of Alpha Parf. Um, and after hearing, after Alpha Parf, some of the senior executive teams, um, after hearing of certain projects that were launched in the U.S. due to my efforts, there was a gentleman that called me out of Alpha Parf, Italy, uh, that said, "Hey, look, uh, we would really like to talk to you. We, you know, we." We, we come we came to know of who you are over the last couple of years we understand you're a uh, they say an Italo americano which is an italian american <laughs> means that essentially means bi an italian well, no 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 of course not and uh, and that's what led me to alpha park they put in a phone call they said hey why don't you fly out to to milan and and, and you know spend a day and a half with us we'd like to talk to you about a project and that's how i landed with alpha park this is going back i think about nine years ago okay so what drives you still? I mean, you've been, I mean, you have a family history. You've been doing this for a while, your whole career. What continues to drive you? Ah, great question. What continues to drive me <laughs> is the need to want to give back. Mm. Uh, I, I, have, I have come to learn that after 25 years of, of experience, I've come to understand the value of that experience just, just recently. And it was really Alpha Parf that allowed me the right to understand that that you know that value. Uh, after being here eight years, you know, eighteen years of experience at that stage, they are the ones that have learned to harness some of my past experiences, right? And if somebody would have shown me the way mm -hmm. along the way, it, it would have been you know I don't know where I don't know where my career would be t today. So what drives me today is is wanting to be of value to my sector, no matter who's in front of me, whether it's a potential client or a hairdresser or an educator or a brand that is looking um, to expand its portfolio or to act as a mentor, that, that is what is continuing to drive me. I have a massive need to find a way to give back. One of the things that, that I'm missing out of my career is finding a mentor. Maybe I didn't do a very good job in allowing people to understand along the way who I wanted to have mentor me. So I would say that if I had to, you know, if I had to put it in, in you know, in, in one phrase, what drives me is wanting to be of value to the person in front of me. And, and naturally, uh, my world on a daily basis sits in the cosmetic professional sector. I love that. So what advice do you have for some someone young starting out in this industry today? Maybe whether they choose hair or aesthetics, or maybe they go into the business side, but someone that's just starting their career. Do the work that you love. Do the work that you love. But that also go that also holds true even outside of our sector. But never make a decision based on money, um, because through mergers and acquisitions, you, you, you're, you're not certain what your what your career is going to look like with company A or company B or company C, but follow your true passion and then everything else will follow, including, you know, including the salaries and everything that goes along with that. I wish I would have heeded that advice, but I didn't years ago. <laughs> I chose a job for money and I don't work there anymore, obviously, because it agreed. It, yeah. Yeah. You know, I. Was it a conscious decision early on not to make decisions based on salaries? Not really. It's it's hindsight. It's hindsight yeah, stuff. Absolutely. And I have not worked for you know for many companies, um, but but the days do get hard, and you really need to tap into that passion that you have for wanting to be of value or for wanting for wanting to meet or exceed the expectation that you set for yourself and for the person that you're trying to help. So at this stage of your career, beyond mm -hmm. being of value, what's on deck? What's next for you at this stage of, of your career that you that can is, share? I know some people are like, well, I can't share. No, all no, no, of course, no, no, of course. That is, a very, that is a very scary question because naturally you draw from, you draw from your past experiences. And every stage of my career, whether I was working at Procter & Gamble or I was working at working at Alpha Park, or I was working at Z1 and Milkshake or Colomer. Every point of my career, I thought that I was going to spend the rest of my life there, because I always found myself to be very happy with what I was doing. In hindsight, were certain situations more challenging than others? Of course they were. So 
That is a very scary question for me to be able to answer because I see myself here for <laughs> as long as they, for as long as they allow me to stay. I I don't know. Um, today, uh, after you know, after a nice healthy experience, I have helped launch brands into the marketplace. I have helped existing brands um, spread their portfolio. I have helped marketing teams with their strategies. I have so much experience and I love every single piece of it. It's tough for me to say, I know exactly what I'm going to do next because I truly love what I'm doing and I love working with Alpha Park. I don't know how to answer that. Mm -hmm. But eventually, eventually, uh, hopefully never. Eventually, yes, I'm sure. That, that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure I'll have to reach a crossroads at some point. But I don't, I don't have a clear, I don't have a clear path of what I'm going to do next. I kind of, I like that because I have also, I'm mentoring a young hairstylist right now, and she said, "I'm so overwhelmed by the thought of what I might be doing in five years. How do I even choose?" And I told her, I said, "I don't know that I'm a great example because I've." like you have enjoyed different stages and enjoyed and don't know what's coming next. And I haven't always been the one to plan out, okay, here's where I'm going in two years and five years and down the road and what that looks like. And that's okay. Yeah. 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 It's okay. Once again, if you're always doing what you love, uh, I'm, I'm a very conservative guy. If you always do what you love, I'm a firm believer that everything will fall into place as it should. Awesome. So what do you think, if you, as you look out kind of at the, the, the whole scape of, of professional beauty, is there anything missing to you? Like, are there things that you think, gosh, we really need to work on this in the industry? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think that it would be, it would be, so in my, in our industry, we, we have two segments. We have the professional sector, which is specific to the licensed hairdresser. And we have, the retail sector like Ulta and Target and Walmart and Sephora. I, I think that when we speak to individuals in either one of those sectors, they have been in their silos yes. for so long that they fail to open their horizons a bit to see how looking across the aisle, if you will, can be mm -hmm. beneficial to both to both sides. If I could if I could find a way to fast track the benefits of the professional sector, the licensed hairdresser sector, if I could find a way to fast ta fast track the way that they think and move and pass that over onto the retail side and do the same thing for the retail side, naturally I, I think that everybody would 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 gain from just entering discussions on what our sector as a whole could look like future forward. Um, there's a bit of resentment, yes. I feel <laughs> that is formally, yeah, there's a bit of resentment between those two, between those two silos. And in my world, in the Alpha Power world, which works in both of those sectors, okay, depending on the division of Alpha Power, it, it's a very, it's a very, it's a very common um it's a very common, tough area, you know, to, to navigate. Yeah, I love that because, and there is resentment. I, you know, I come from a line of hairdressers. My sister is still in the industry. Um, and it is, it's sometimes that like each party going back and throwing the blame on the other that, oh, brands don't care about professionals and they're selling everywhere instead of embracing. But how could, what could we learn if we work together? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, you know, I think that the retail side has, the, the, much of the success that these professional brands are getting on the retail side is really due to the professional side, you know, bringing the brand to light. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and I think that the resentment that sits on the professional side, that it, that the brand is no longer exclusive to the professional salon. Um, you know, I just think that there's a missing gap there that could be that could be harnessed and shortened because i think they both sides have a lot to learn you know from, from you know from the, from 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 the opposite that might be your next thing giovanni spearheading this bridging of the gap 
that is a, <laughs> yeah, that is, that is a really like aha moment. Yoga. Maybe that's your next thing. I'm yeah, just... that is a, yeah, that is a that is a definitely an aha moment. The, the, you know, the challenge that I have with that is the challenge that I have with that is is that when you're talking to somebody like me, I, I'm afraid. I'm afraid that folks will develop an opinion yeah. of what it is that I'm saying leveraged against a very potential bias approach. And that to me is my biggest daily challenge, right? I think people forget that I want to be of value on an ongoing basis. If if I win from being from providing that value, then that's great. If my client, if Alpha Parf's clients win from being of that value, then that's great. But on a general daily basis, people ask my opinion on many fronts all the all the time. I'm I'm afraid that folks will look at it and say, well, this, this guy is a salesman. Right. And then that's why he's providing the opinion that he's providing. And that might have been true early in my career, but I have learned to let that go halfway through to you know to be sincere and it and it comes back to it tenfold. And and to tie it all together, I think that that's really the importance of having a a good mentor, which I ne- which I never had. I learned that kind of the hard way when you lead with integrity, uh, mm-hmm. right? To try and be a solution to a problem and to try and uh, be a value to whatever it is that needs to be done. You know, I, I you know, I think it, I think once again, I think it comes back. So it's interesting how everything kind of comes full circle, right? Absolutely. So if you weren't doing this in professional beauty, is there anything else you think you'd be doing? Clearly not construction. You said not construction. <laughs> I was just going to say <laughs> Uh, no, no, no. I can't see myself doing anything else. Uh, I, I, you know, I broke into the industry at the at the tender age of uh, fifteen. Wow. Uh, I, I, yeah, I in the middle of in the middle of the day um, in high school, I left for the vocational program to go get mm-hmm. licensed. So on graduation day, for all intents and purposes, I was a professional. At wow. eighteen years old, I started working on. I started working on you know, on, on clients in an adult world at 18, I was working in an adult world, you know, having adult discussions with women, with men while doing their hair. I, I, I wouldn't know what else to do if, uh, if this industry threw, threw me out. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, always loved, I always love to ask something kind of fun. Do you have a favorite decade for like the look, the style, the whatever was popular? Is there something that, man, this, this, I would think, mm totally re-wear this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say, I would say for the, if I had to pick a decade, 2000 to 2010, oh. it was definitely, yeah, it was, it was, it, 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 you know, I graduated beauty school in 97, graduated high school, you know, in, in 97. The, the looks, the looks were definitely a little f- funkier. Maybe I'm being, you know, once again, bias because it's, because it, it's, because it's my era, but that to me speaks, you know, as, you know, speaks nicely. That's awesome. I graduated in 97 as well. Oh, okay. Very good. Yeah. Oh, and I remember nice. the, the, the 97 fashions. Woo. Yeah. That was something. No, no eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Or, or, or we had the, the pointed, the men yeah. had the pointed sideburns. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Mine were razor, razor straight, you know, razor straight. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Those were the days. Those were the days. Well, yes. yeah. um, so what is your biggest beauty influence? Is there someone that was your your biggest? Do you mean uh, what? What do you mean by influence? Can you rephrase? Um, maybe someone who I know you said you didn't have a mentor, but is there someone that you really feel like wow, they really influenced my views on beauty? They influenced my yes. approach to how I yes. how I lead. Yes, yes, absolutely. Great question, and the answer is as close to a mentor as you can get. It's, it's, it's my current direct report. It's, it's, it's my boss. It's the gentleman that recruited me to come work at Alpha Parf. He handles a very specific, uh, a very specific division within Alpha Parf. Uh, he's the global manager of private label. Um, his, uh, he has been the most influential um, throughout my career. I've had, a, I've had m- many, but by far, Paulo Signori, who is who is the global who is the global manager of, of private label within Alpha Park, has been the most influential, both in my leadership style, as well as his just daily outlook 
on on life, which carries over into his his professional career. He's exactly the same person uh, in, in, in on the pro side as he is in his personal life. And and I and I drew and I drew from that. Um, outside, outside of, outside of that, naturally it was my mom. She, you know, she's not from the industry, but the similarities between, between Paolo Signori, who is my boss in one division and my mom are, are, um, are, are uncanny. They're very optimistic, very solution driven, um, always wanting to be a value. They're the ones that tapped into the understanding that understanding that I have of wanting to be valuable to any discussion that I bring. So certainly it's, it's Paolo Signori. Oh, I love that. I love yeah. that. And I love that you've drawn the connections to your mom too. And like, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if he knows that, but, but he will now. <laughs> he, will, he, will, he will now. I'm sure he senses it. It's never been said, but, but I'm sure he understands that anyway. Well, I love that you can tell them that. I I believe um, I haven't told enough people in my life what they meant to me, and like that sometimes you don't always get that opportunity, and it's like okay, I need to remember to tell people what they mean to me because I might not have an opportunity someday to do it if I wait. Yeah, and you know, you know, I you ever you ever meet those people that just you just know who to go to for everything, uh -huh. whether it's professional or personal or any problem or or the fact that you got to. A flat tire on the throughway. My my mom was one of those people. Is one of those people, and 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 Paolo is one of those people. And it's interesting because you try and emulate, you know, those that you admire. Mm -hmm. And and I and I I draw from that, and I see on a daily basis, both on the professional side and the personal side, I have folks that come to me, right, for questions. My brother has got a, uh, you know, a booming landscaping. Uh, bu business, you know, I I don't know anything about cutting lawns or or landscaping or or hardscapes. Yet he calls me two three times a week, wanting to run something by me. And um and and what what I have found uh, the the qualities uh, that I love most about my mom and Paolo, uh, and naturally I, I try and emulate that with whoever's in front of me. I just love that. So, any other words of wisdom or advice that you would like to impart unto this next generation coming in for beauty? Just you have to follow what you love. You have to follow your passion. Uh, I, I think that everything falls into place if if you just continue to tap into that and and don't forget and don't forget that. Thank you so much. This it, this was so fun. I could talk to you for hours. I know we don't have hours, but. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Yeah, this was fun. Thank you so very much. I appreciate so great. it. Well, I hope that we get to see you in person sometime this year yet. And But if not, thank you so much for everything that you're doing in the industry and for your support of the, Pope, the Professional Beauty Association. Thank you. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks so much, Giovanni. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.